The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Week three of college football is now behind us, and we had a lot to get to, so we're going to talk about much of the week three and everything that happened there, as well as week two in the NFL. So we're going to have to jump over to the NFL, talk a little bit of the action that was going on there. And currently, we just now saw some new news come up in the NFL here as we're recording this on Monday night. So we're going to have to talk about all of this and much more today on Rising to the Occasion. everybody and welcome into another episode of rising to the occasion so happy to have you guys here with us we're jumping on real quick just to cover a lot that's been going on because there has been a lot of fun stuff going on in the nfl and the college football world this past weekend was crazy but looking forward to the next week's slate here in week four uh it, it seems like it's going to be even more action-packed and so we're really excited for all of it but man before we get into it we got to bring up our sponsors uh, and ultimately, it's just really us letting you guys know that if you're looking for a place to place a bet and you want to go and find the best sports book or fantasy uh, casino and stuff like that near you, we've made it very easy for you. Because the most important thing about betting on sports is having multiple sports books to go and compare the odds. You want to go through and look at what has the best lines. Maybe you're going to use Bet365. Maybe you're going to use DraftKings or FanDuel. You can go over to uh, rising2.com slash bet. That's R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O dot com slash B-E-T. What that does is you go there and you can find all of the most exclusive offers that the top sports books in your area uh, are going to offer you. And so it searches by area and it also searches and gives you the best exclusive offers. And so you can find more sports books to sign up for and get extra money. Uh, I know Bet365, if that's in your area, they were giving away one here. Uh, it's currently going on that if you bet a dollar, you get $365 in bonus bets instantly. So there's so many more that you can go and look at. You can look and see what the top sports books are in your region and get all of those exclusive offers. So go check it out over at rising2.com slash bet. That's R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O dot com slash bet when you click on those links it automatically gives you the best exclusive offer uh, that, that they have on those sports books so again check it out you can find all the best sports books in your area and again it gives you those exclusive offers why would you want to pass those up uh, another one that was really cool i think it was points bet uh, they're offering as long as you you bet fifty dollars you get a free fanatics jersey so not only are you betting and so you can possibly make some money on some sports betting but then on top of that, you're getting a good deal because $50 for a jersey, I mean, hey, that's that's a deal. Uh, so go check it out. Again, that's rising2.com slash bet, R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O dot com slash bet. But let me go ahead and bring in my co-host for the evening. Jeremy, how you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good, man. I know it's Monday night, obviously. We got Monday night football going on. We got two key games going on tonight. We got the Cleveland Browns versus the Pittsburgh Steelers going on. We got Bryce Young getting his feet wet on the field going on against the New Orleans Saints, excuse me, against Derek Carr. Then it's I had I didn't get a chance to look at the score recently, but I know it's, it's been a pretty I've got it going on right here. I'm, I'm rooting for it because I hit the over on it uh, at 40 points. Somebody was putting it in at 40 points, so – even if they just get 11 oh points right now, I, I'm safe and I don't. I at least don't have to pay that out. Um, but I put that yeah. in. I mean, I, I knew I shouldn't have because, it, l- listen, guys, if you want advice right now, as it stands right now, I'm pretty sure this past weekend I looked and the the NFL as a whole was like 12 and one at one point uh, for hitting the under. So if you want advice right now, hit the under in the NFL because like that that's just been hitting. And, and it's so hard to take the under for me because I, I want to see high scoring points. Uh, and it's more fun to hit the hit the over. But, yeah, I'm, I'm rooting for this one to just hit 11 more points. So maybe maybe uh, Bryce Young can get something going. Uh, if, if he can hit 11 points with his team alone, send it to overtime and I'll hit the over. So, uh, you know, yeah, absolutely. If that's the one do. thing you want. <laughs> knowing you, you never you never pick the under. You always smash it over. But in this kind of oh, a situation, yeah. I think your under is your your best friend right now, honestly. 
Well, then I was looking over at the Browns. I think the Browns Steelers. I didn't. I don't. I don't know what that one ended up to be. That one. That game's over. Um, but you know that one. I should have hit the over. I was. I was debating on it, and I was like, man, that's a scary line because it's two defensive teams. Plus, they're going to both run. Uh, Nick Chubb, nasty injury. Uh, so hopefully he gets better. But, man, let's get over to college football real quick. We're going to recap this. Uh, we're going to be flying through it. We're not going to cover as many games as we would hope that we could cover. Um, but we're just going to try to get through this. It's late at night. We were able to hop on here late. Uh, sorry to Blake. I know it, you know we weren't able. I wasn't able to get uh, over to the hotel in time from work. Just some things happening here at work that wasn't able to get over in time for us to record with him on with us. But, man, let's get into it. We're going to start off with Georgia, South Carolina, a matchup that we talked about, a matchup that we were excited about, uh, and, and looking over at this matchup, it was it was number one, uh, you know, the number one team in the nation, uh, favored by over twenty points, and we were looking at this thinking, yeah, but South Carolina is going to find a way to keep themselves in it, and I, I knew they would, but I wasn't sure that they would really cover this spread. But not only did they cover that spread, they led for a while in this game, and they they kept it really close. They were looking really good for a, for a good while. Uh, but ultimately, let, let's be honest, Jeremy. I mean, it's 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 Georgia and their defense. That's what ends up coming away with it uh, in this game. And you look over at what Spencer Rattler was able to do. I mean, again, another really good showing from him. I don't think he looked bad at all. It's just you look at what his offensive line is doing and what the the, the weapons around him is doing. He he was able to put a, a touchdown uh, through the air. But you know, with with him, I mean, for one, he was the leading rusher with 35 yards. That's not good. Uh, and I know it's tough to run against Georgia's defense, but you've got to get some kind of ground game. And on top of that, he threw two interceptions. Uh, so ultimately, I mean, Carson Beck, he looked about as good as you can really expect him to, I guess, right now. But, I mean, we just had high expectations out of him. Uh, he wasn't able to get anything in the end zone. Uh, and, and ultimately, it was just, like I said, it was just Georgia's defense drowning out this this South Carolina team and getting their offense back into it for Georgia to come away with the win uh, 24 to 14. So South Carolina is now one and two. Yeah, I mean, looking at the game overall, like what we talked about last episode, we all thought Spencer Rowler is definitely going to be running around like his head, with like a chicken with his head cut off for sure. But I mean, looking at the score wise, it definitely seemed like a lot better of a game than what it really was. Like, like you mentioned, it's Georgia for crying out loud. Georgia's defense is, in my in my opinion, one of the scariest defenses of the entire of the entire league, in my honest opinion. But looking at it, like you said, they were able to put points up on the board. We thought that it was going to be a blowout a little bit in that sense. But Spencer Rowler definitely stepped into the plate and brought his A game. I know the score didn't get to become like what he wanted to and the overall outcome of the game. But I mean, Spencer Rowler definitely is. Obviously, we can tell he's definitely changed. He's definitely aged to become a better quarterback. I know, obviously, he didn't get the dub, but, I mean, you go against these top five teams in this conference, and you know you're going to be in for a dogfight. So, overall, you really can't doubt Spencer. I can I shouldn't say doubt. You can't diss Spencer Rowler for this kind of a situation just because you're going into Georgia – or, no, excuse me, you're going against Georgia, and you got to know once you go against – these teams, especially like we just mentioned for Georgia, you got to bring every single A game to the table and not let one single mistake happen. Yeah, and I think overall, I think what Spencer Rattler is doing is really kind of upping his stock. Even though they're losing, he's upping Definitely. his stock because I think scouts are going to see what happens. Scouts don't look at stats, all right? They, they consider no. the stats and see what the stats are telling them. Uh, and if the stats just show, man, this guy didn't do anything, they're not going to really bother. But the stats are showing like, hey, there's some decent numbers here. Why aren't they better? Yeah. And then they go and analyze that. And so I think they're going to see this out of Spencer, Spencer Rattler. And, and he's he's doing a phenomenal job for what he's got to work with. But, I mean, this whole offense, uh, you can blame the offensive line, but I feel oh, like the man. weapons around him really aren't doing a whole lot for him either. But let's jump over to Florida State, Boston College. This is one that I looked at and I thought, I, I think Florida State's got this. I think they cover uh, and you know, looking over at that game, it was it was not pretty. <laughs> uh, you, you watched no. Boston College bounce their way back into this game several times, uh, and, and looking at it, Florida State was a twenty-five and a half point favorite, and Boston College mm-hmm. they just lost to NIU, uh, and <laughs> that that's that's not a good team to lose to. But then they bounced back. Uh, you know, they were they were able to to get themselves into this game you know they, they kept themselves in it really the whole game and they were they were strong defensively that's kind of what surprised me the most but then on top of that their offense was able to kind of bounce in there uh, and, and keep on going uh, their quarterback uh, I mean he, he looked really good throughout the day I didn't feel like 
the Florida State's defense really stood up and made as much you know noise as we we would have expected for them to and so uh, you know they weren't able to get back and pressure him very much and you know the, the running game the, the fact that the running game wasn't working for Boston College and they were still able to, able to keep this close uh, I, I don't know if you look at this game and you just think man because let's we, we look at it I mean Florida State led the game the whole t- the whole way through, but the fourth quarter, Boston College made this a close game. They came back to to only lose by three. It was thirty one to twenty nine uh, as a total, and so you you look at the number three team in the nation, only winning by three points to Boston College, who is not on their A game at all. Uh, I mean, is this something? Do you think that Florida State fans should be worried about, or do you just say it was it was a a, a conference game that you're going to go in there, you're going to have those scares every once in a while. You look past it and you just move on. To me, a little bit, I think it was just a little bit of a scare, but there's definitely some sh- some signs of improvement that definitely need to be stepped up. Just because, obviously, as you mentioned, Boston, I mean, FSU definitely had the definite control of this game going in going into the first through third quarter. Obviously, putting up um, 31 points in the first three quarters, then only allowing BC to only get 16 points in the for the first through third quarter. In my sense, that's definitely something that obviously you need to go back and watch this film and understand, okay, we need to focus on these little individual things. And, of course, we already know that they're probably going to be doing that. If not, they're doing it right now. But, I mean, you look at it for overall stats. I mean, this was definitely something that, like you mentioned, we thought this team was just going to completely roll through these guys. I mean, this is the number three team for crying out loud. Then all of a sudden you let a fourth quarter, all of a sudden you allow BC to score 13 unanswered points. That's that's something that you can't allow in this division. I mean, looking at it, you need to stay on your A game until the first whistle at the very ending of the whistle. I don't care what you say about it, but Overall, I can list off so much stats about this game, but I'm just going to cut to the chase. You need to stay on the gas pedal and don't let off until that final whistle blows. Because in that kind of a situation, they easily could have they could have won this game for crying out loud. Yeah. And you look at it, like I said, this is the number three team. You can't do that kind of stuff, guys. Come on now. You know better. But Florida State obviously was able to bring out the win, like you said, 31-29. But they definitely need to show some signs of improvement, obviously, on the run game and on the passing game, for my definite sake. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Florida State, I feel like, uh, you know, just looking at their defense, so that's really the thing that really needed to step up there in key moments. But let's jump yeah. over to Texas because Texas, I mean, this is this is now the number four team in the nation. Right? They're currently ranked number four. They were able to jump up a little. And looking looking at what they did, so they come out and they, they didn't just beat Texas. They whomped Texas, uh, and it was a close game yeah. for much of the contest. But once they got into that rhythm there in the second half, and especially in the fourth quarter, Texas ran away with this game. And let's not forget what they did there, because this is, a, you know. And at first we were thinking, man, this is uh, maybe maybe a really good job by by Texas. But then you, you know you think you look into this week, uh, and and we'll talk about Alabama here in a second. But maybe maybe Alabama wasn't as good as we were really kind of making them out to be, but you beat them in, in Tuscaloosa. Now you go over and you're, you're you're back at home against Wyoming. Who let's remember, this is a Wyoming team who just now beat Texas Tech, and 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 you know it was a tough game all the way through, but they beat a tough Texas Tech team. And this is also a Texas Tech team who just now went toe to toe with Oregon and and made that a tight game. So looking at this overall, I think Wyoming might just be a better team than we expect them to be. They're sitting there at two and one yeah. right now. And and I think I think they're just a decent little team right now. I don't think they're going to be good enough to really make any kind of big noise. Uh, I think they could possibly make their way into the top twenty-five this year if they keep this this up. Uh, and so looking at Wyoming, I think they're they are just uh, slightly better. And I was grinning here just a minute ago, looking over um, because uh, the Panthers just now scored and got the two-point conversion. And so I'm, I'm kind oh, of oh boy, they, they just need three points for me to be safe. Uh, so you know if they're able to make a big stop here on defense. Uh, which doesn't look like it's going to happen because it looks like they just got the first down. So um, I'm probably oh boy. probably losing this one. But anyways, jumping back over here to Texas, uh, you know, <laughs> it's it's just the the fact that they were so close. When we got to the end of the third quarter, it was ten to ten. <laughs> so I mean, this is a Texas team again, ranked number four and deservedly so. Like they deserved that spot, but then they're going toe to toe with a Wyoming team at home. Uh, this isn't just something that you don't expect, but 
the part that we can look at and we can say Texas fans relax is because what did we see against Alabama? It was toe-to-toe with Alabama. And in that fourth quarter, you kicked on the Jets. It was toe-to-toe with Wyoming. Though you don't want to be toe-to-toe with Wyoming at home, you can afford to do that nope. because what do they do in the fourth quarter? They turn around and they got 21 points. Uh, you know, looking at Quinn mm-hmm. Ewers and, and what he was able to do, uh, he, he had another, he, he just had a slow start to the game, but he had another good game, a solid game, didn't turn it over. Uh, and, and for him being able to, to come out here and lead the team. But the part, the part that it, I think Texas fans can look at and, and recognize as being something good was that you look at, at their running game and their running game is, is really where you can really be happy because you look at Jonathan Brooks, uh, him putting up 164 yards. That was something that you can really look at and be very happy with as a team and as a whole. Uh, and, and total, you, you came, came away with 185 yards, closer to that 200-yard mark where you really want to be when you're Texas. And that was the biggest question for Texas. So coming away in the fourth quarter, blowing them out in the fourth quarter, 21-0 to in the fourth quarter alone, uh, that's really what you want to see from this Texas squad. And so I think Texas fans can, can rest assured you still have a very good team. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I know, especially for Texas coming off their big win against Alabama, I know, obviously, this is the highest ranking, I think, when I looked last in, like, the last uh, 13 to 14 years for te- for Texas. I mean, of course, that's awesome for the University of Texas. I mean, horns up, baby. Let's go. I mean, but overall, the outcome, I know, like you mentioned, compared to last week against Alabama, it was only – so many points until the fourth quarter but in my eyes texas has to find a way to not only get it in the fourth quarter but you need to progress it through all four quarters and then if you keep doing that aspect throughout the entire game obviously you're going to get higher in the rankings but i mean you're also going to get a lot more people whether it's scouts fans or whoever the situation is paying a lot more attention to you and getting a lot more media time. I know obvious that you mentioned when Jonathan Brooks having 164 yard game, that was a really good game for him. I know I guarantee you there's probably a lot of sore backs from Texas. And I mean, obviously Wyoming, like you mentioned, they're not a sleeper team here. And obviously not the only bump to two and one having a loss against Texas. This Wyoming team is de- they can definitely sneak up on you. I mean, you look at them, obviously what they did last week, but Obviously, that was a new. This is a new week looking into Wyoming. I know they obviously had a high expectation going into Texas playing against the Longhorns, but obviously the fourth quarter, is, like you mentioned, is what really shined out for Texas. I mean, putting up 21 points in the fourth quarter alone compared to having 10 points for going into the first three quarters. I mean, that's definitely a big, a big aspect for Texas and giving them the W that they rightfully deserve. Now, I don't know who they have next week, but in in my eyes, you definitely need to find a way to get blockers downfield and get the running game going a little bit better. Then, obviously, we've seen Texas and their quarterback have an arm. He's got an arm, but you need to establish both on the throwing game and the running game especially. Yeah, yeah. Keep on leading on your backs and and try to get them into exactly. you know into those those good positions, but uh, and and set them up. And I think what what Alabama or talking about Texas uh, and and what they were able to do using this game and and utilizing their running backs in a game where you you can really afford to just kind of be slow and uh, come away with the win. I yeah. think Alabama did something very similar. We're gonna jump over and talk about them and their scare against UC, USF. Uh, so this is Southern Florida, who is now one and two. Uh, and, and looking at Southern Florida, they're not the same that they were a few years back when we saw them creep into that top 25 and looking pretty good with Charlie Strong yeah. as, as head coach. But this is a USF team that should have gotten blown out by Alabama. And we talked about this. Uh, hats off to you because you, you called the uh, I guess we didn't we didn't get that episode out there, but you called the under in this game and it a- absolutely smashed. Yeah. Uh, so. It was a lot because of the rain. It was a big time because of the weather, um, weather yeah. delays throughout this game and everything. But you got into halftime, and you were tied 3-3 three to three with USF as Alabama. You're the Crimson Tide. You are the team that everyone looks at every year and says, yeah, they're probably going to make it to the playoffs. If not, if not just that, they're, they might you know, win the SEC and go on to, to win the national championship. You are the team that everyone looks at and says – yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bet against those guys, but here you have Alabama, and, and they were 34 point favorites in this game. 34 point favorites. 
Uh, the the total was was at sixty one. I think you can probably drop that down to maybe around forty one when you when you look at the weather, uh, and and it still hit under that because Alabama ends up winning seventeen to three, and and they start off with Tyler Buckner, and they said they were going to do this. I think it was smart to try to let them get into this game of all games, but Tyler Buckner did not look good at all. I know it was rainy. No. I I can give you a little bit of leeway there, but only five of fourteen. Uh, and 34 yards, mm. they put Ty Simpson in, and mm. I think Ty Simpson looked better. You know, he he was actually – Ty Simpson came in after the rain had already really picked up, and he was passing the ball better than Tyler Buckner when the light, rain was still pretty light. So I, I looking at this I, overall, I mean, the defense did what they needed to do on, for Alabama. They came away with the win. This offense just overall looked atrocious, uh, and they they had to lean on the run game because of, of the weather. Uh, and so obviously you go over there and, and they, they did well with it. Um, but overall, I mean, it, should Alabama be worried about the, the quarterback position right now? Or do you think this is just something that you give you give Nick Saban his time and, and trust his process? I mean, if I was any fan or even Nick Saban in Alabama, I would definitely be concerned. Because obviously, you, you know as well as much as I do, Josh, this is definitely not the Alabama that we're used to. We're used to the Alabama that will completely mow you over have like a 63 to 14 game or whatever the score situation is this is definitely not the alabama team we're used to as you mentioned yes the defense was able to do their job and thankfully get the w for the team but i know i saw i think out on espn that nick saban is having Jalen milrow as qb1 so i want to know what is going to be progressing now obviously i know he was getting starting reps but as you can tell from tyler buckner then having ty simpson come in the game only completing 10 for 23 for 107 yards that is not the alabama we're used to we're used to having the alabama where they have 107 yards maybe in the first quarter but i mean if i'm alabama right now i would definitely be really really concerned i don't know what their schedule exactly looks like going up to up this upcoming week but there's a lot of things that we can obviously see that still need finally this up, cleaned. This upcoming and week, it, they go against uh, Ole Miss, and let me pull this up real quick because I can't remember. It's at okay. Alabama, so it's in Tuscaloosa. It's at uh, Alabama, but, but you okay. go against Ole Miss, who is not joking around with you. The, you know, Lane Kiffin. No, knows that that one, the the former the former offensive coordinator that took over for Lane Kiffin under Nick Saban just beat Nick Saban. So now he wants a little taste of this. This, you know, he wants to he wants to know what that tastes like. So uh, it's definitely one yeah. that I think Alabama needs to get in order. But let's jump over to another SEC matchup. We had Florida and Tennessee. This is one that we talked about on Saturday, and we called it wrong uh, because. But we also talked about how this could be one that you're walking into the swamp. You don't take this lightly. And we, we picked Tennessee to win this game because Tennessee is the better team. We, we know that Tennessee is the better team. Uh, they weren't on Saturday. We know that Tennessee should be able to win this game, but we also called that because you're walking into the swamp, don't get too cocky because Florida, the Florida Gators have now won six of the last, uh, yeah, six, six of the last seven of these matchups uh, mm -hmm. between these two teams. And this is a big rivalry. Whenever these two teams meet, uh, there was even a few players too that ended up getting uh, suspended. Uh, they, they're they're being taken out. Yeah, a little bit of fighting going on there. Uh, and so it just it was a chippy game all the way through. Florida ends up coming away, and their defense, uh, their defense. I, I heard a lot of complaining about the ref refs. I didn't really see it. I wasn't able to watch this whole game. I was at the Nebraska game, so I was more or less trying to catch up on a lot of the games and see what was going on. Uh, I was able to watch some of it, you know, in between. You know breaks and stuff like that and pulling it up on my phone but I, I didn't see any of the refs I don't think you can blame the refs when you lost by 13 points so looking at this I, I think Florida did a really good job of just throwing them off rhythm you can't keep this Josh Heupel offense on, on rhythm uh, and being able to disrupt uh, Joe Milton and honestly looking over at the offense Grant Mertz did a really good job but what did we talk about that that Florida needed to do really well to be able to win this game it was run the ball use that etn exactly. kid and and make him work uh, and so looking over at florida i think they did a very good job like i said disrupting the the rhythm of this offense and on florida uh, for their offense grant mertz just doing what he needed to do not trying to do anything extra and just be a good quarterback 
and let your running your running game do all of the work and it works so well for this team and so hats off to florida because you're back on the right pace and we talked about this billy napier needs to win this game because he's on the hot seat yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm st- I'm gonna be bi- a little bit biased here. I think Tennessee lost because they probably heard me sing. Um, but on a different subject, like you mentioned, let your running backs do the work. Trevor e- T E T E ran for a career high 172 yards and a tutty for the game. That's a great game. Then obviously Montreal Johnson scored twice for Florida, and as you can tell, obviously by the outcome being 29-16. The, once, you, like you mentioned, best if you go down the swamp, you better have a big ego, otherwise you're gonna get bit. And obviously, you can tell Florida Gators took a bite out of Tennessee, and literally for the Volunteers, they had a 550 mile trip from Knoxville, and I don't think that bus or that plane ride home was probably the nicest ride home if I had to guess. But yeah. looking at the game, I didn't get a chance to watch much of it either, but. From what I see outside of the fighting clips, it literally looked like a boxing match at half the time. Then I did also hear the same thing a little bit about the refs and not having great calls, but I am going to get an opportunity to go watch the highlights of the game or even just a game replay. But looking at it, obviously, in the first quarter, there was only having Texas, I mean Texas, having Tennessee and Florida both put up points, then having a 20-point second quarter for Florida that was big for them then that was pretty much all that at Roth. I mean only Tennessee getting nine more points for the rest of the game of course but looking at it like you mentioned if you go down the swamp and you don't have that big of an ego and coming into it to have a solid game plan getting getting everything set in stone for what you want to do you, obviously, you can tell Florida was ready for it, and Tennessee was just—they just, they just yeah. in my in my honest opinion, they don't seem opponent. prepared. Yeah, you have to know your opponent, and you have to bring your defense. I don't know if they left them on the bus, if mm. they left them back in Knoxville. What happened? They left you them back in Knoxville. That's for sure. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just a terrible game. But jump it over to K State, Missouri. Uh, I don't have a whole lot to say on this one, other than the fact that. Again, Vegas knows what they're talking about. We talked about how crazy this spread was, and it is. It was it was crazy that, that Kansas State would have even been within four points on that spread um, because we, we took that at, at four and a half. You know, why not? And it came down to it where, you know, they're lining up for a 61-yard field goal, and I said, Psh, yeah, we, we've got this. K-State's going to come out, win by a touchdown. We're going to cover that spread. But no, he hits the 61-yard field goal. Uh, I mean, it was it was absolutely insane. Uh, it was Harrison Mevis. I had to look up his name real quick just to remember what it was. Uh, it just comes out, you know, and 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 drains a 61-yard field goal, and the thing still had five to ten yards left in it, based on the angle on TV. Oh, easily. Uh, so so looking at this win, hats off to Mizzou for sticking in there. And what we mentioned was that Mizzou's not going to be able to, to to stick in it offensively, but they can stick it. You know, they can they can keep slow K K State down defensively. And man, were we wrong on that because their offense showed up. Their defense did the did the job that we thought. I mean, I, I was kind of expecting this to be a little bit of lower lower scoring game. Twenty seven points. That's a good job on the defense, but the offense comes away with thirty to win it. Absolutely. I mean, even looking at obviously from from Mizzou having. Brady Cook, a QB, I mean, having 23 for 35, then having a 356-yard game, that's a great game for him. Then I was kind of thinking the same aspect. Like, I think we all honestly we were expecting this to be a low ball game. But, I mean, everyone showed up off the bus ready to go. And, I mean, even looking on the other side for K-State, for Will Howard having 25 for 39 for 270 yards and three tutties to one interception. But, I mean, you, you have those days to where – little itty bitty things that can make or break the game then obviously you can tell by the score outcome for for mizzou a 61 yard field goal holy toledo i think he kicked that thing clear from missouri all the way probably to california to say the least that thing yeah, had he, so he much carry it in it happened there because i mean it was just an amazing <laughs> yeah pick. but on top of that we we brought up luther burden uh, and, and and Brandon Cook and, and saying you know I think we we think that Cook kid needs to kind of have a good day I think Blake brought that up on Saturday and he did mm-hmm. he had a very good day over 350 yards two touchdowns and those two touchdowns to Luther Luther Burden who he brought up so mm-hmm. uh, an, an outstanding job 
by by K, by uh, Missouri. K State just just couldn't quite finish the job. I mean, I think K State yeah. did good there at the end too. They pushed them back. They pushed them out of field goal position. So we thought. Um, but just a, a huge leg, able, able to come away with that. But let's jump over to the late night game. If you are a normal human being and you don't stay up until 1.30 in the morning central time, uh, which was 2.30 eastern time, you didn't get to watch the rest of this game, but it was a very fun game. Of course, all the drama going into it. And I'm going to be honest, I think a lot of the drama was just kind of forced. It was kind of cooked up uh, to be more than what it really was. And I think Prime knows how to work the media and how to, to get the media to be on his side and these kinds of things too. And so good job to him too, because he's drawing attention and, it, and it's working for Colorado. But one thing I need to say is when you're a 20 plus point favorite and you end up winning in double overtime, don't storm the field. That's ridiculous. Storm in the field when you were a, a, a 20 plus point favorite. Uh, I mean, it was just, it was a back and forth game. Colorado State had this for a long time but you can't commit over 170 yards of penalties. I mean, that, that was ridiculous. Yeah. I do think I, I, I'm, I'm going to side with Colorado State a little bit on this, and I, I understand I think a lot of those calls were bogus. I saw a lot of a lot of yes. personal fouls being called where it should have been equaling out. You know, there, there should have been a lot of a lot of them where it was just it was just a lot of fighting back and forth. Um, but, you know, it, it was – it, it was very, very slanted in a lot of the calls because there was a lot of them that were that should have been a, a personal foul on both sides. It ends up getting called only on one side. And it leaned towards the favor uh, of Colorado a lot. But Shadour Sanders, hats off to him. And Shiloh Sanders stepping up and finally making his name heard uh, a lot throughout the broadcast. I think he had a forced fumble and he had himself a pick six. Uh, and, and seeing the, the father-son aspect there for, for Prime, it's fun to watch. Uh, and, and I can really appreciate him for the way that he, he has that. But he needs he needs to coach his players better, too, because I don't like the mentality that he gives off to them uh, of, of going out there and starting as many fights as they did. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as you can tell, it's one thing to have family as a – when I say that by obviously having a father being a coach and have, then having a son being a – a significantly great player but you definitely need to control the aspect and everyone's emotions and ego to to prove yourself just to make you look a little bit more professional just because you look at these guys and obviously outside of nil but these guys they this is all that they give is blood sweat and tears in football and we can go off on it, but I'm going to get straight to the point. Obviously, with Shadur Sanders, obviously getting the connection to Michael Harrison, the second overtime, and getting 36, 36 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. I honestly thought Colorado State was definitely going to come out with this, just because they they were definitely showing signs that they wanted this game a little bit more than Colorado. But of course, obviously the overtime overtime session definitely showed otherwise. But I. I agree with you, Josh. It's one thing to show them a film when you win a national championship, but come on. It's overtime for crying out loud. You, I understand this is the best beginning season for Colorado since God knows when, but I mean, have a little bit more class and decency. I understand you want to celebrate. Go celebrate in the locker room. Go have a cigar like you won the championship in the locker room. Go do it at home. Go do something. But I mean... Well, and overall, the overall app. The, the win, uh, yeah, like you're saying, you know, you can celebrate the win, but to storm the field and get all excessive and I, I don't know, it was just, it was just too much for me. We're we're, we're making storming yeah. the field uh, in, into something little, and it should be a big deal. Uh, I can understand Tennessee doing it to Alabama because that's a big, big time win over a big time opponent that you never beat, um, but not yes. Colorado over Colorado State. Uh, I, I get it. It's, no. it's your first first. Uh, season with prime but we've got to we've got to get over that but man, let's jump over to the nfl real quick because uh, i want to try to fly through these a little bit um but let's start off with the bills the bills had a, a good game uh we saw you know uh, uh, you know in week one we saw really josh allen he just struggled a lot of turnovers and mm-hmm. things that he couldn't he couldn't fix uh, and it just seemed like it got worse and worse and really that was a big reason why the jets without aaron Rodgers, were able to win uh their, their defense stood tall and they were able to force uh, Josh Allen to make some bad decisions, but Josh Allen comes out now at uh, this this past week in, you know, in the, in, against the Raiders, and he has a really good game. Uh, he goes and he, he he throws 
31 for 37, so a really good completion percentage, 274 yards and three touchdowns. That was the big the big one. Uh, and, and, of course, the Bills looked good, but I really want to focus on Josh, Josh Allen uh, and, and what he was able to do uh, just because I, I think – He's going to be the key guy for you. He's the guy that you need to be able to lean on. He's the guy that you need to expect to show up big. Uh, and, and for him to bounce back the way that he did, I saw him in the, in the press conference after the game and the big grins uh, and everything just kind of looking, looking at the camera. I'm very happy. I'm happy for him. I'm happy that he was able to come away uh, with a victory uh, and, and able to spread the rock around the field too. Not, not just settling on one receiver. So a great game by Josh Allen and the Bills. Their defense stood up tall too. They win 38-10 to 10, uh, here in week two of the NFL. Two. It's going to be confusing going back and forth. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's great to see Josh Allen definitely bounce back compared to playing against the New York Jets. Throwing three interceptions to number three, I don't know if that was some luck or whatever the situation is, but, I mean, that was definitely a game Josh Allen did not want to remember, to say the least. I mean, then obviously going back to this week's game for Josh Allen, like you mentioned, having 274 yards, having a passer rating of 124.5, that's huge for Josh Allen to have a bounce-back game like that. Then overall for the Bills entirely, they definitely played a way better game. They looked a lot better. There's still some, obviously, slides in the need to improve. I understand that obviously the first couple of weeks, but you're still learning and you're still trying to find these key guys to know whether he's going to be crunch or if he's going to be crunching his butt on the bench. And I mean, looking at it, like you said, Josh Allen, this is definitely something that he just needs to take and learn from Josh Allen. You're a great quarterback. You have unbelievable talent. Now, Everyone's going to have a bad game. I don't know if this is necessarily the time that Josh Allen had his bad game early in the season and he's just going to keep progressing from it. But there's still obviously a lot of season left. For all we know, Josh Allen this upcoming weekend, he could throw four picks for all we know. I really hope he don't because if he does, there's definitely going to be a lot of controversy that is going to be going in the Bills. Yeah, and I think I think this game against the Raiders really shows that you know Josh Allen was was willing to admit. I mean, he he took all the blame on himself too, and that was one thing that you saw last week. Yeah. And now this week, bouncing it around, taking that blame and fixing it uh, to not throw any mm-hmm. picks this week. That was that was really good for him uh, to be able to to be able to turn this game around, turn his his game around, uh, and and help his, his team win big time here in week two against the Raiders. But looking over at the Bengals, uh, I know you don't want to talk about it, but looking at the Bengals, wh- what I want to hear is when we see the Bengals go 0-2, uh, and they lost week one against the Browns in an ugly fashion, but week two, they still kept it close. It wasn't like they just absolutely got killed. They lost by three points. It was 27-24 to against a good Ravens team. And I think it was a Ravens offense that was clicking. The defense was good enough to slow them down a little bit, um, but just overall not able to come away with the win. Is this time for Bengals fans to panic, or is it just time to slow down and, and let things let, let things work themselves out and, and hope that Joe Burrow turns things around? It's definitely, you can slow down a little bit. Obviously, like you mentioned, we were like this last year. Start 0-2, then just keep progressing through the season and getting, getting our feet wet and getting going. But I had an opportunity to watch the game from game to game, and Baltimore... The one thing about Baltimore that you can never know about is Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson can either throw a pass or obviously everyone's seen Lamar Jackson. He can use his legs. When he's running out of the pocket, Lamar Jackson, in my opinion, is one of the scariest quarterbacks to scramble out of the pocket. Lamar Jackson, he reminds me of not as fast, but he has a Tyreek Hill kind of a speed. And Lamar Jackson is definitely a good quarterback, but looking over the Bengals side, there was a lot of times to where you can definitely tell that they were just throwing little bubble passes out to the left or to the right, mainly to the right of Joe Burrow. But I didn't necessarily like that getting two or three yards a game. In my opinion, you got to trust your wide receivers. I know obviously you can trust T, you can trust Jamar, you can trust so many of those wideouts to make those clutch catches. And obviously, you look at Joe Burrow, he definitely trusted T. Higgins in the inside the red zone. I, he had the two touchdowns for the for us, especially going into the game. Then the first six points we got on the board was from an 82-yard punt return, which was fantastic. Then looking into it, I'm not necessarily worried yet. If you get in like week three and week four and you get 0-4, then I'm definitely going to be starving and get worried. But it's still early in the season for the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm not being biased because I'm a really, really big Bengals fan. But looking at it, 
like I said, we started the season last year at 0-2, so I'm going to stay optimistic and stay positive. It's just time. I know, obviously, we got some new things to learn, new players to get into reps, so let's just be patient a little bit here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and, and, and you're right. The last two seasons, really, because you take two seasons ago, they made it to the Super Bowl and started off at a slow start. Mm-hmm. They, they, they didn't even look like they would make the playoffs, came away with the surge, got to the playoffs, and ended up making it to the Super Bowl. So I think Cincinnati can definitely yeah. take a, a step back. And don't don't be too critical definitely. of Joe Burrow. Uh, let him let him do his no. thing because he's going to he's gonna figure it out. Yeah. I think he's got enough talent. The big thing, he's just got to stay healthy. Yeah, absolutely. So looking over at the Lions, I don't want to talk too much on this game. They ended up winning, or they, oh, sorry, they, they end up losing in Lost. overtime yep. to the Seahawks, 37 to 31. Are the Lions better this year? Do we think that they're they're better than they were a season ago? Because we, we looked at them week one, winning against Kansas City in Arrowhead Stadium, or was it just that the Chiefs were without Travis Kelsey and Chris Jones and the receivers were dropping passes and they, the Chiefs just played that bad. So, do you, I mean, do you think that the Lions are just that good or do you think that the Kansas City Chiefs just had an off game and maybe the Lions are still just as good as they were last year? As Blake say, the Kansas City Chiefs look like cheeks <laughs> week one. And I sincerely think Detroit can win the division with how they're playing right now to me compared to last year don't get me wrong they had some they had some good games last year but this year for detroit is definitely a new year i've been i've been having the opportunity to watch a little bit more of their games and looking at this detroit team they're definitely a lot better there's a lot more communication there's a lot more routes that you can see that you want to see them run and they'll do it and you get the connections out of it this is one thing that they obviously like you've mentioned before you need to have trust in your quarterback and let him do his job whether it's throwing a quick five-yard route or throwing a money shot on the corner and letting your wide receivers jump up for a money ball and let them score a touchdown so i think detroit is definitely going to be a team to be on the main lookout for i like i said i'm sticking with my i think they can honestly win their division with this kind of a team that they have this year yeah i think they are good enough it's just with with looking at how bad kansas city was week one i think we're maybe over hyping them just a little bit too much i do think they're better this year though to, to answer that question 100 better i think they make the playoffs at the very least um and looking at that division i don't think the packers are going to win it uh, i don't think the bears are going to win it so looking no. around, you've got the Vikings or the Lions. Which ones are you going to take? Uh, and, and right now, I do lean the Lions. I think they they look scarier. Um, but you, you got to you got to keep on going on defense because I think their defense looks better. It doesn't look good though. Uh, so you've you've got to be uh, you you've got to be a little bit better on the defensive side. But let's jump over to the Giants. Uh, and obviously uh, Saquon gets hurt. I, I, we're going to bring that up here later on. But they were down 20 to zero at halftime. They were down at, at 21 points uh, in the third quarter. They end up coming back and winning this game on on a big field goal uh, to to go up 31 to 28. I know it's just the Cardinals. I know the Cardinals are are not a good team, but you've got to think for New York, uh, for the fan base, and for the team. Even if it was kind of a garbage team that they were going against to be able to do this, to come back from 20 point deficit and about a quarter and a half. You've got to be pretty happy with the way that, that you came out with this. Uh, so, I mean, overall, I mean, do you, do you think New York is starting to find their 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 bounce back to, to finally get back on the right track? Uh, or do you think maybe this team is just not good after losing 40, what was it, 40 to zip? Is that right? Against the Cowboys? Yeah, 40 to zip. Yeah, so, I mean, that was um it Is, is that New was York terrible. better now? <laughs> uh, have, they, have they turned the page and they're, they're going to be on a better track? Or is is it just not their season? Uh, I don't think it's their season. I think they started to turn the page a little bit, then all of a sudden the wind finally came back and flipped that page back down. Like going out week one and getting blown out like that, that was horrendous. I'm sorry, I I usually don't I usually don't cut the game short, but after them scoring forty, I shut the game off and went to bed. That was terrible on their part offense looked terrible defense looked terrible i mean you i don't know what you could physically do if you have to condition them more just to make them play better or if you have to start your morning with maybe a three-hour film session with each individual player or group session but 
I don't know what can sincerely fix that team. Like at this point, you might as well just get a, a whole brand new start at this point because after getting blown out 40 to nothing, then going into this week, what more do you really have to lose? I know obviously you, it's early in the season. But... defense for sure because even on the defense, just oh, on the man. defense alone, you can't let up 28 points, almost 30 points. To the no. Uh, so that's that's a big one. A, a Cardinals offense that is struggling right now. They don't know what to do right now, and they're just going to have to tank uh, this season to hope mm-hmm. for another good draft pick. But let's jump over yeah. to the Commanders, Broncos. Broncos yet again blowing a lead. <laughs> to lose and the way that they lost was you know poor clock management uh, so that's the first thing i want to say is manage the clock better sean payton knows better russell wilson knows better but they took way too long to snap the ball they should have had a touchdown before the two minute warning had the two minute warning as an extra timeout and, and kept all three timeouts instead russell wilson dances around in the backfield gets sacked they have to waste a, a timeout and they don't get, the, you know, they, they don't get the ball back until they. I think it was 48 seconds left of the game. They wasted too much mm-hmm. time and were trying too many small things. Uh, and, and again, a lot of it goes to Russell Wilson. I think he danced around too much. But a, another thing is, how many times do we have to bring up the refs and, and, and criticize the refs for a bad call at a bad time because they they complete the hail mary. They get it all the way down there and it bounces off three guys' hands. And they catch it for the touchdown. They just need the two-point conversion, push it into overtime. A pretty good throw. It, it was the right decision, the right place. But then you don't call blatant pass interference right there in front of the referee. I mean, you, you have got to get your head out of your butt. You have to answer for these kinds of calls because that was a game-changing call. And and again, we, we have to hold the referees accountable for, for what they're doing here. Um, but overall, I mean, hats off to the Broncos for being able to, hit, to complete the, the Hail Mary. Outside of that, I mean, you, you blew a lead to the Commanders, who are a struggling franchise, uh, and, and you end up losing 35-33. to 33. That was really, really hard to watch for the Denver Broncos. Denver Broncos, from the get-go, they were rolling. Obviously, putting up 14 points the first quarter, then all of a sudden, you let Washington knock on the door and they didn't just politely give it a two knocker. They definitely was fist pounding on the door. Then I agree with you, Josh. Russell Wilson was pulling old Russell Wilson, scrambling out of the pocket, burning time that shouldn't be burned. And obviously you can tell by the outcome of the score, all all credit to Denver and putting up a heck of a fight. But looking at the two-point conversion, Obviously, you can tell it was blunt. It was right in front of you. I'm sorry, but I think we need to go back to Canton, Ohio, and let let the guys, let the NFL referees watch us in the booth, and we can wear the stripes, and then they can sit in the sidelines and just watch us do what we can do. But yeah, I mean, I, I looking at it, job, I mean, but you get you get paid to do this. You get paid to make the right calls you, at the right times. So you you've got to make that. But let's ju- let's jump yeah. over to the Dolphins real quick just to close this out. The Dolphins end up winning 20, 24 to seventeen against the Patriots uh, last night for us. Uh, you know, on, on Sunday night, and and so for them coming out with the big win over over a good Patriots team. But uh, I mean, the Patriots they're zero and two, but they haven't looked terrible uh, up to this point. I think Mac Jones came out; he had a a pretty good game overall. Um, but then Tua Tua is really what I want to talk about here because I think Tua really showed that he's worked on a lot of things. And I think as long as he's able to stay healthy, he's been making very smart decisions to get the ball out quick. And I think it's a game plan overall to make sure that he's not getting hit. And and I just have to give him and the coaching staff uh, credit because we, we don't want to see what happened last year to Tua. Uh, and, and every time he's out no. on the field, I'm, I'm scared for the dude. I don't want that, want that to happen to him. He's already got head damage that, that's not going to be repaired. Uh, and, and so, I mean, it's it's just scary to see him out there. But hats off to him because he's he's completing quick passes and, and tough reads and putting the ball where it needs to be a lot. And uh, hats off to, to Jalen Waddell and Tyreek Hill both too because they're they're getting open. They're getting uh, where they need to be, and, and they're doing a really good job at it. So overall, this whole this whole offense uh, and Raheem Mostert, he had a day over 120 yards mm. and two touchdowns uh, on the ground. So looking at this Dolphins team, looking really good. And, and I'm really happy to see Tua doing well and, and being very efficient, but then also staying clean, staying healthy. 
Absolutely. I mean, you look at Tua from college, he was definitely a great quarterback. Now, obviously, trying to transfer that here to the NFL, he's last year, he never wants to remember if he even remembers much of last season. Um, Tua, I know they were talking to Tyreek Hill, and them and Tyreek Hill is saying that Tua is definitely one of the best quarterbacks in the league for accuracy. Now, Josh, I, I want your honest opinion after on my question to you about is that true for what you think of Tua but looking at the overall game looking at Miami against New York I mean New York the New England Patriots I mean looking at it the Patriots just never really got going in my opinion I know they had Ezekiel Elliott in and Ezekiel Elliott in my opinion did absolutely nothing he really looked like a dump truck trying to go up a hill and I don't know if he has too dark of a visor or if he just forgot how to play football and Looking at, like I said, looking at Miami, they definitely, yeah, that's a better standpoint. He has both. Um, looking at Miami, they definitely were the team to to be on the lookout for. They definitely showed really great signs of improvement, like you mentioned, letting Tua throw those clutch passes and let him throw it in a tight window. And you know that, like you said, between Waddle, Tyree Kill, and even like Mostert, he was definitely having a heck of a game for the last night. But – Overall, Miami, they definitely deserve that win last night, and they need to definitely keep bringing that A game each week, week in and week out. Yeah, yeah, and the defense did well, too. Uh, they, they didn't they didn't perform yes. perfect, but uh, just overall, just, just looking really solid. And like I said, really happy to see that for Tua. But let's go ahead and jump mm-hmm. over. That's the, the pretty much all we've got for the NFL recap. Let's jump over to our drive of the week. We're each going to pull up. Uh, a, a come up with a, the biggest headline from this past week. It could be a big victory, a news headline, uh, whatever the case may be. It could be a lot of things. Uh, I'll start us off. I'm going to bring up the Nebraska Cornhuskers. I went to that game hoping that they would be able to pull out a win. Obviously, against Northern Illinois, you were a 20-point favorite, uh, or I guess 12-point 12, 12 favorite, I think, at, at that one. I think it was 11.5. Uh, your 20-point favorites okay. against Louisiana Tech. But 11.5-point favorites, you come out and you get the victory. And this is big for Nebraska football right now. You just started off on a disappointing 0-2 when you really probably you, – you, you could have won week one if it wasn't for one guy. Uh, and, and you could have made week two a lot closer against a tough Colorado team if it wasn't for one guy. And they finally make the right decision. They put Harburg in. I was there. I, I like the way that the fan base did it. I don't think the fan base ever booed Jeff Sims. I don't think they ever chanted for him. The way that we talked about Oklahoma doing that towards Spencer Rattler, they they cheered very loud whenever they heard that Harburg was going to be coming in the game. Uh, to So, you know, Heinrich Har- Harburg comes in as the starting quarterback, and they were ecstatic to hear it. Uh, the, the whole stadium was roaring to hear him come in. And they only had one turnover, and it was from a fumble that was really because the line collapsed before he had time to even pull it in. Uh, and so just a, a really good game. He went 14 of 24, 158 yards. He put two touchdowns in through the air and one on the ground. He led the team in rushing. He, he had 98 yards rushing, four, four, over four and a half yards per carry. And like I said, a, a touchdown on top of that. So he just had he had a very good game. Uh, yes, it was against Northern Illinois, but that was a very good game for what you can expect from him. And I think if they keep on putting Harbor again, I think he looks better. I think the team looks better with him in. Like I said, I think Jeff Sims is just too turnover prone. He does not deserve to be a, a quarterback. If anything, you put him in as a wildcat formation. You don't give him the opportunity uh, to turn the ball over. Uh, and so just my, my drive of the week is is Nebraska football as a whole, uh, choosing choosing to put Heinrich Harburg in there, having him come away with the victory. So a really big win there. But Jeremy, what's your drive of the week? My drive of the week, we've talked about this a lot. And when I say we, I mainly mean you on the spotlight. Saquon is back. However, he is Saquon back, back to the <laughs> injury tent. Yes, exactly. Saquon has made his way back to the injury tent. I know um, he got an MRI done and it was just an ordinary ankle sprain. Thankfully, Everyone's heart sank, and there was probably a lot of tears that were coming out when they saw Saquon Barkley not even putting any pressure on that leg. And correct me if I'm wrong, Josh, but that's the same leg that he had the torn ACL, correct? I believe it is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the same leg, okay. which sucks. Um, okay. But yeah, hopefully yeah, absolutely. I mean, 
it's still horrible. But I mean, I know obviously at first when they made out a statement that he was going to be a week to week, and now that I saw a statement from ESPN that he is going to be a three week, um, a three week sideline for Saquon Barkley. I'm not against this decision one ounce. Obviously, Saquon Barkley has definitely had some history and injury prone. It's a definite unfortunate thing, but obviously you see these guys, they take a beating. They're definitely not ones to to play around with. Like Saquon Barkley, believe me, he will be back he in will three be. weeks. And, and I think he's I think he's gonna be fine. I think he's gonna come back and still have a great season. Uh that's my prediction. Yeah, just because I mean I'm rooting for the guy. He's he's such a good guy. Yeah. Uh and, and yeah, I, I hate to see this for him, but hopefully he can get healthy. But for everyone watching for if you're watching on YouTube uh, first of all, make sure to hit that subscribe button. We're, we're growing, and it's all because of you guys. We thank you all so much. And, uh, you know, you, you hitting that subscribe button, if you haven't already, it helps us a lot more than you realize. But if you have already hit that subscribe button, go ahead and follow us on social media. That's another great way. We're on Facebook, Instagram, uh, X, uh, whatever it's called this week. There you go. And, uh, <laughs> and you, can, you can go follow us on all of that. Also over on TikTok as well. We're trying to up the, the uh, ante on, on how much we're – we're uh, putting out there on social media, so we get it. we give you guys a little bit more there. Not a huge following on social media yet, but you guys could help us there. Um, but we thank you all so much for that. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, you can give us a five star review. That is the best way to help us over there. We thank you all so much for the love and support so far. Make sure to tune in on uh, Thursday. We should have another episode. Uh, everything, as long as everything goes smooth, and make sure to tune in for that. But make sure to tune in on Saturday morning at 8:30 a.m. Central Time. That's 9:30 Eastern. You can tune in then uh, to watch us live on our YouTube page. And we're going to be talking more college football. We're going to have a week four slate that is very fun, very, very uh, packed slate of football. It's going to be another another tough week to, to break down just a couple of, uh, you know, just a, just five different matchups. So make sure to tune in on, on Saturday live on our YouTube page and uh, jump in the chat with us as well. We want to see from you, see what you guys have to say. Love we want to hear, hear from, from you guys. guys. Uh, and if we can get more live action, maybe we can start to work in where we get you guys to call in. Uh, and stuff like that too so uh, let's let's get some some live action going in the chat and stuff like that but guys thanks again so much for your support uh, we thank you all so much for everything you do for us we love doing this and we love uh, having you guys as our as our listeners as our fans as uh, as as our viewership so keep it going keep on supporting us uh, we'll see you next time